I've had the Moto X Pure 2015 edition for quite a bit of time, and I'm ready to share with you my full experience and my thoughts and opinions. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into this thing, starting with the design. This thing is built like a tank. I mean, when you pick it up, you feel like you're holding like a solid piece of metal. I mean, it weighs a little bit more than other phones, which is kind of a negative, but this thing is built to last. And Motorola makes great durable phones. The other thing is going along with the weight, it's still a very large phone. And if you take a look at their timeline, they've just gotten bigger over the years. So don't expect the new Moto X to be a one-handed device. Even though it is compact, it's still definitely a two-handed phone. And it's also uh, somewhat water resistant. It has a water repellent coating and it's also very tightly made so water is not going to seep to the cracks. And I've seen plenty of videos where people have actually dunked this thing in water and it survived. Also, I really love the fact that this phone has front facing speakers and I know it's not new, but I just wish every phone had this. They get very loud and the fact that they're pointing straight at you probably makes them sound a little bit louder than what they really are, but it just, it's, it's awesome. Another thing is uh, right inside the SIM card slot, you have a micro SD card slot expandable up to 128 gigs. This is really awesome and something that a lot of phone companies are steering away from going more into cloud storage, but I like to have things on a card so that way I can pop it out and put it in and not have to worry about any errors with cloud backup. One issue with their SD card is the fact that it's in the SIM card slot. Not a huge ordeal, but it could be a problem to some. Now I had two Moto X's. I had a wood one and I had the plastic one. And between the two, I definitely prefer the silicone plastic. It has a much better grip and I love the texture on the back. Don't get me wrong, I love the wood. It's just very slick and I don't see it holding up over a period of time as much as the plastic material. Also, what's not to love about that dimple? I love the dimple. And speaking of ergonomics, uh, that curve. You know, all the Moto X's have had it and I love it. The curve actually makes managing this thing a little bit easier with one hand, even though by no means is it a one-handed phone. The display is now a Quad HD 5.7 inch display and it's pretty nice, I have to admit. They've gone away from the AMOLED panel and now have an IPS TFT panel, so you don't get any more vibrancy, saturation, things you've grown to expect with Moto X AMOLED panels. But everything is nice, sharp, crisp, and clear, um, what you should expect from a Quad HD panel, but just don't expect it to be the Quad HD panel found on like the S6 or the Note 5. Uh, viewing angles, definitely not the best, but they're about average. Um, outdoor visibility, again, not the best, but I'd say it's average. So let's talk about what's powering this thing, you know, the internals, the brains behind the operation. You're looking at the Snapdragon 808 paired with three gigabytes of RAM and the Adreno 418 and everything runs great. Unlike the Snapdragon 810, you're not really gonna have any overheating issues. I mean, it gets warm, but it's not overheating at all. Um, it's just slightly, especially if you have like the silicone plastic back, you don't really feel it as much as say the wood back. I'm not a big mobile gamer, but I did try out a few games on the new Moto X and they ran flawlessly. The other thing is, even though a lot of phones have four gigabytes of RAM or are coming out with four gigabytes of RAM, three gigabytes of RAM is plenty for what you can do on this phone. Even though it has nothing to do with the internals per se, it does feature turbocharging. It's able to give you 10 hours of usage in about 15 minutes. Of course, it depends on your usage, but still really awesome feature and faster than Samsung. And you definitely need it with this phone and you'll know why once I get to battery. Also, the Moto X has NFC, so you can use Android Pay and you know several other features that require NFC. If I had to complain about one thing when it comes to the hardware of the Moto X, it'd probably be the fact that it doesn't have wireless charging. But not really a big deal. You have turbo charging. So all this charging talk has me wanting to talk about the battery. It's a 3000 milliamp hour battery and the battery life is Meh. Uh, it's average. I'd say it can last you a whole day, depending on, you know, how much you use your phone. Are you a moderate to light user? If you're a heavy user, absolutely not. You're going to be charging your phone probably um, around three to four o'clock. If you start using it roughly around eight. It just dies fast, especially with active display no longer conserving battery at all. I mean, the S6 was shitty and it definitely gets better than the S6. Moving things right along to software, you're looking at a pretty much stock version of Android L and it will be upgraded to Android M in the future. We really just don't know how long. The things that they've added are really functional. So you do have some really awesome features that Motorola has added to the software, but they've been carried over from previous Moto Xs. So if you're new to the Moto X, just let me go ahead and tell you what a few are. You have the ability to twist your wrist to automatically launch the camera app and you can do a karate chop to turn on the flashlight. However, I found, especially with the first phone that I had, the gestures didn't always work, specifically the flashlight. In the past, I really never used Moto Assist, but I forced myself to use it on the new Moto X, and I actually found it quite useful. 
Whenever you're driving, it will pretty much put your phone in like a do not disturb mode, keeping it quiet, but it reads out your text and it also reads out your calls. And it gives you the ability to respond to text just using your voice. So if you have a Bluetooth connection in your car, great feature and it just helps you keep your eyes on the road and not on your phone. Active display is still great. Even though it doesn't conserve battery anymore, it still gives you your notifications at a glance. And all you have to do is just wave your hand over it and they'll start pulsating. The hands-free feature built in is awesome. Definitely love it. You can set up a custom command and all you have to do is just say your custom command. In my case, it's, yo fool, wake up, boom. And it's actually pretty accurate for the most part. However, I did find voice recognition to have the occasional problem translating my speech to text when I was sending a message. Enough about the software, let's talk about the camera. The camera has been improved drastically. It's now a Sony Sensor F2.0, and it also has the ability to capture UHD, just like last year, and it's 21 megapixels. It doesn't have OIS, but their software stabilization works wonders when it comes to video. Doesn't really do too much for photos, but for video, it actually does a great job at stabilizing. On the front, you have a five megapixel F2.0 2.0 with a little bit larger pixels for better low light and you have a flash. Uh, the flash works okay. I mean, do I recommend using the flash all the time? No. But if you're in a really, really dark room, you can get a decent picture. As far as the increased pixel size to give you better low light, no. And the same thing can be said with the rear facing camera. It's not the best in low light. You still get a lot of noise and you get a lot of picture degradation. So don't expect to get mind blowing low light results out of this camera. It's not going to happen. You know, no matter the specs on the camera, it doesn't matter without great software and processing. And I'm happy to say both have been improved uh, just a little bit on the software, more so on the processing. Processing has gotten a lot better and the image quality is the best Motorola has put out yet. As far as the software, they've given you the ability to control the exposure. So it just adds a little bit more flexibility into your shot, giving you the ability to take a better picture, I guess. So what about just using this thing as a phone? I got my first Moto X and I would have amazing reception. I mean, Motorola has some of the best antennas in the game, but for some reason, even though I would have full reception, people would say they couldn't hear me. I would fade in and out and sometimes just drop off. Had great reception, but it would just, you know, stop they couldn't hear me anymore and it was because i had a defective phone and the microphone was actually really really bad but as far as my new phone call quality has been great for what you're getting in this phone the price is definitely justifiable but it just doesn't have that flagship price so i would recommend it to anybody looking to get an unlocked phone this will work on verizon as long as they approve the device this is ot for tech or jonathan whatever you want to call me and i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did, make sure you drop me a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, follow me on all my social media connections, and if you have any questions, get at me. Of course, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.